In today's video, major slides, big collisions, big dive bombs, and much more. Hey guys, what is up now? Gameran2010 here with my first ever YouTube video and the first ever My Team Career Mode video on F1 23 I'll be doing. Today, we're, I'm going to be setting up all the settings and I'm going to make the schedule, delivery, and we're going to go through run one in Bahrain. So, as you see, some of the settings I have set um, player faults all to normal. I mean, just to make it more realistic. I'm not going to turn on red flags because of the red flag glitch. Hopefully, that gets fixed soon. But uh, once that glitch is fixed, the red flags will be turned back on for um, this career. Um, damage is going to be on the simulation just so we have. First. Enter a team name. Uh, a realistic damage model. For the team name, I decided to go with the MMA Racing Team. I honestly couldn't think of anything more realistic. And you can't put numbers in a team name, which, I mean, I really don't now, see why. Let's you choose. Some sponsors can't, offer a larger but... sign and bonus up front, some offer more weekly income. The better we perform, the more our level will go up as the team gains more acclaim. Doing this will increase the income. Our chassis won't be going anywhere fast without the power Dynamics because so I had one of the best weekly now. income. And Obviously, I the greater cash the performance and decent. durability, the better. But be careful about spending Here, all that cash. I wanted a cheaper powertrain, so I didn't to want to go with Ferrari well. or Mercedes, even though I have power great unit performance and also provide well, upgrades throughout Ferrari the season free of charge. We know what happens with them. Oh! Uh. Red Bull and Renault were the cheaper ones, so I decided Renault is a good starter power supply, or power uh, unit, so I ended up going with Renault, and then along with that, I thought we should do a Renault Academy driver. We're not much of a team without so, a second driver. Let's sign a team. I ended mate. up picking. Here are the drivers interested in joining our team. Look at their stats and pick someone you think can get as good results, as long as we can afford them. We renew contracts periodically, so you'll have plenty of chances to sign someone else should the need arise. Looks like Jack we can afford Dillon. this power unit so, supplier and teammate. I think go we're ahead ready to and go confirm on if to you the have interview it. in the factory. New year, new drivers, new team. Welcome and great to have you with us as we move far away from the paddock to the headquarters of the newest outfit on the Formula One grid. We've been granted exclusive access with an interview, not just with the team owner or the star driver, but both. Because for the first time in modern F1 history, the team owner is behind the wheel themselves. Now is a great time to bring a new team into the sport, particularly off the back of such compelling competition last year. 2022 saw huge regulation changes and it was Red Bull who came out on top in the development race. But that was last year. This year could be a very different story. Let me tell you, this facility is an absolute hive of activity and there is a palpable sense of excitement around the car they've built. Quietly, they truly believe they can challenge at the top and they've had the time now to craft a hugely competitive race car. But theory is one thing and taking on the brightest lights in motorsport is quite another. So how does the owner of F1's 11th team feel as they prepare to be thrust into the limelight of the F1 circus? New driver lineups, Qatar returns, Las Vegas debuts and the engineering race continues to push the sport and the drivers to new heights. What are they aiming for? Most excited about? Most nervous for? Well, soon we will meet them to find out. But first, let's take a look at the brand new car. So, the blue, black, and silver based livery here uh, looks pretty good, in my opinion. Um, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Uh, but I really just wanted to go with a simple look, but also a nice look that fit the car. So, um, yeah, now on to the interview. Well, hi, thank you so much for having us. Great to be here. I'm going to start with the question that everyone is asking. It's been a long time since we've seen a team owner drive their own car and a lot's changed since then. The sport has really evolved. So how are you going to manage the responsibility of doing both roles? So the first question is kind of easy. Nothing is easy like doing this. So 
<laughs> and tell me about your teammate. They're clearly very excited to have signed with you. What do they bring to the team? I wish there was an option to put uh, they were in the academy of the power unit, but there isn't. So tell me about the work on the car. It's clearly a blank canvas. You've done a lot. What have you prioritized? So here I really wanted to go with uh, the aero department. To give them now there's boost. no getting away from the fact that your competitors have a huge amount of Formula One experience. You are a total newcomer. Tell us where you see the opportunities to make those vital performance gains. Here, I thought power would also use a boost. Now, ultimately, your success this season will be determined by whether you can take positions from other drivers. Where do you believe this car has the edge? Um, we produce an extremely streamlined and With cars, so many so, disciplines yeah. and experts working so closely together here at your HQ, who gets the coveted teacher's gold star? Who are you most proud of as the first race edges ever closer? Um, the power train has definitely been the most Well, I could talk to you all day. Thank you so much for your time, but I better let you get back to work. because There's plenty more still to do. All the very best for your inaugural F1 season. All right, now get out of my factory. So here's the season. We start in Bahrain, then go to Saudi Arabia, then Australia, then Monaco, then Spain, Canada, Austria, the UK, Hungary, Spa, then the season break or the mid season break, and then Monza, then Qatar for the first time, then Mexico, Brazil, Las Vegas, and Abu Dhabi to finish off this season. I really like this calendar so far. So now we're here in the HQ for the first time. Uh, I really want to get <clears throat> some of the department upgrades going before the season starts just to give us that little edge of what we can do compared to the other midfield and lower end teams it's just so we can get as close as we can to them before the season starts to try and get a jump and try and compete as much as we can with other teams and we're also going to do some R&D updates to the car we lack in the chassis section the most of this car so we can do two upgrades um but I really want to get the most out of the R&D points um so we just are looking at all the upgrades we can do. I really want to focus on chassis right now because that's where we lack the most. But I also want to get some front end or front downforce upgrades too and rear eventually. But right now I'm trying to focus on chassis and aero, like I've said. But I can't decide which one I want to do. So it's just really hard right now to determine because I also want to get something that would fit Bahrain. So we ended up going with the powertrain upgrade to give us a little bit more power on the straights in Bahrain because Bahrain is a power hungry circuit. And then we're going to get Jack into a driver training camp and do a preseason merch sale just to get a little more cash to spend on facilities and just little things like that that can help this team uh, a lot because we are a newcomer team we don't have that much to work off of and use resource wise so we're gonna wait until March 2nd to see if that upgrade gets on in time but for the air department we are gonna do a control rate upgrade just so we can lower the chance of a part failing when we upgrade something and develop something. And we also have enough money to get a fitness center upgrade for Jack to improve some of his stats. And now we have more points to do even more development. So I ended up going with a weight reduction upgrade here. And now I'm gonna also do a gearbox uh, improved materials upgrade just to help with the durability of our engine and make sure it doesn't fail on us because remember we okay, do have we've had the new parts come through the fabrication process faults turned on and now here we are in Bahrain getting ready for practice one and our upgrade did come through and not fail so that is good to help us the session has drawn to a close so and let's review our top first three first practice Science, we ended up being P11 and Sergio 1.4 seconds off what of an incredible practice Max session that was and Jack but the fun doesn't stop place, here though join us again as the rest of the room. weekend unfolds but 
I believe he can get more out of the car if we if he needed to and tried. So now on to qualifying. So here we are for the first ever qualifying in Bahrain. Uh, the setup, it's, I like using a low ride height just to get closer to the ground and get the most out of our car. And I'm okay, that's all the checks complete, so we're ready to go. Just to get a banker in. Just so we can get a feel for the car around Bahrain. Um, I have done practice sessions obviously, but that would be too long to add into here. But practice is really good. Uh, practice one, it was a little iffy. I had a few moments, but I just did quick practice for two and three. So, on our first laps, this is going to be crucial for us to get into Q2 just so we can get a good lap set down as we have a little moment of oversteer. And here we come down the main straight, down towards turn one, gear us wide open, gear us on hot lap, and we're just pushing as hard as we can to get a good lap in. As we have a little bit of rear walking, we do save it though. I don't think it'll cost us that much time, but it will definitely cost us a little bit. And now here we are, X in turn three, heading down towards turn four for the first time on a flying lap. And it, the entry's pretty good. The exit we ran a little bit wide, but we kept it within the white lines, um, unlike what Lewis Hamilton did back in 2021. Um, and we come through turn 6 and 7, we have a little moment on the curb, heading in towards turn 8, but we're still okay, um, heading down towards 9 and 10. This lap looks pretty good so far, but, um, oh, and that's lap over for us, so I just went on a charge lap here just to charge the battery and we're gonna go again on the next lap, and here we go and exiting turn 15 again we have a little snap of oversteer on the exit so we're going to go for another lap on the same set of socks because we do need to get a good lap in just to get uh, within the 107 percent of making it into the race which i know that doesn't apply here but i'm going to act like it does as we're heading to turn one we're two tenth two and a half tenths down so it looks like that little snap of oversteer on entry kind of helped us into turn one uh, but here we come through turn four. We have we take a lot of the curb and run wide. Again, staying inside the lines, unlike what Lewis Hamilton did. Sorry, Lewis Hamilton fans. And we come through. Oh, oh, and we've lost it. And we're in the gravel. And this is not what I wanted this lap to be. But that's what happened. So we went for a charge, and we had two cars behind us. So I tried to get out of the way. And oh, on the charge lap, I spun out, which isn't a surprise to me. Um, so here we're coming to turn 14 and 15 again. Again, we don't have a good lap set down, so we're still on the same set of tires. Going for a third lap now, and Sergeant goes P9 behind us. We give him a little toe. So down into turn one again. We'll see if we can improve on our first lap into turn one, which it looks like we will on the exit, but it stays about one and a half tenths down on our original lap through turn one and two and three coming down into turn four now we are gaining time on our lap but it could be better and now we are in the green so we go green sector one let's keep it clean through six and seven we do but we do go out on the curve a little bit not that bad through turn eight wide or tight sweeping right hand and we have oversteer Again, I do not know what's wrong with this car. We do have a little more front downforce on than rear. And we make it through turn 10 without spinning out again, which is nice. So we finally have got a good, decent time down. As now the delta time has come, is now going to be irrelevant because it doesn't mean anything now because this, the rest of it was a charge lap. Um, we start to lose it, but we keep it straight. And I want to finish this lap to get a good one down. I just and right, I have worked the lap. lap, so please. we are going to pit, and now we're on a new set of softs, not a good time set down, with seven minutes to go, we have enough fuel for about two or three laps on a new set of softs, so we are going to try and go for it here, and we have DRS wide open, ERS on hot lap once more, and we are going to try our best, heading down into turn one. We are still down on our first lap, but now we're up. It's really close. It's 
to our first lap. We take all the curve we can on in turn two, activate DRS, heading down towards turn four, pushing as hard as we can to try to improve on our first original lap. And we are pushing as hard as we can. We still keep it inside the white lines. So this lap will be valid. And we do go red sector one because we were down. Oh, and we need to go over the curb. And since we have a low ride height, we bottom out and we have a little moment in turn eight, which again, I need to sort that out with this car. Maybe lower the front wing a bit. And down in turn 10, we do really good. And it's a decent lap, but I was in first gear, so. Uh, it was a little bit of wheel spin on exit with the new amounts of torque we have in F123. And s turn 11 looked to be pretty good. Um, turn 12, we came through. This lap, it wasn't one of my best around Bahrain, I have to admit. I've done way better, especially in, ra like, in races, I've even done better than this lap. So I definitely know that there's more room to improve on this lap even and we do go green sector two obviously because that's our first competitive sector two we don't have as much oversteer on the exit of turn 15 as we have coming down towards the line we go p21 just ahead of jack so i definitely think there's room to improve uh considering that we are on fresh tires and we have the track to ourselves so we do gain a little bit of time on the delta through turn one better than what we could have Okay, um, just two laps of fuel remaining now. And now we are up by two thousandths of a second. Coming through turn four, we gain a little bit more time, but then lose it on the exit, but then regain it back with just under five minutes to go. We set a green sector one, and we come through turn six and seven, heading down towards a oh, and we bottom out a lot on that curve. That might cost us a tenth or two, but we are up by over six and tenths, now up heading towards seven. Tense, through turn 10. Oh, we do hit the curb. But we go over the exit curb on turn 10, but we are still in the green, so I wanted to keep this lap going to try and salvage something from this lap. Um, because I know that there is room to find time in this car, because I know that I have done way better laps, and that I can still improve. So as we go through turn 12, heading down towards turn 13, we're still up by 5 tenths. A four and a half tenths now and we only have 14 percent energy left so we are going to try and save all the energy we can down in turn 14 and just push as hard as we can towards the line what's the time going to be where are we going to go are we going to go to p10 are we going to go to p20 where are we going to go p19 that is a decent lap so we do come in or no we don't we do a charge lap and we are P19. We still have room to improve. We are only 17 milliseconds down on P17 with Yuki Sonoda. So DRS on. ERS activated. Here we go. We are up by about one tenth. Now we're even with our best lap. We gain about three tenths down in turn one, but we go deep and we go off the track. We have a little bit of oversteer. Oh, that's horrible. Oh no, 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 no. Are you okay? That was a nasty hit. Turn the engine off and wait for the marshals. And that's qualifying over. Um. Yeah. Um. I am shocked. Uh, I did have a lot of oversteer going through turn uh, two and into three, but Jack does not make it through into Q2, and with the extra resource points we got in practice, I forgot to check on this after practice and qualifying, we do end up getting an aero upgrade that will come in, I think for Australia, it's no a, more testing, on to the race. No more practice. This is the real deal, and it's make or break here at round one of this year's Formula One World Championship. There's no shortage of passing opportunities around the 3.36 miles of the Bahrain International Circuit, with the best, of course, at Turn 1, and then another soon after into Turn 4. 15 corners here, 6 to the left and 9 to the right, and we could see one or two flat spots into that tight left-hander of Turn 10.
So with the race not far away from starting, here's what today's grid rundown looks like. So somehow the Ferraris locked out the front row. I don't know how they did with that absolutely trash power unit. So anyway, we have Perez, Hamilton. Wait, what? Verstappen. Hamilton and Perez beat Verstappen. Huh. That's a first. Gasly. Bottas, Both the Renaults Stroll, on the fifth Oscar row of the Piastri, grid. Albon, Albon in P14. That's kind Magnuson, of a shock too. Hulkenberg, Sonoda, the owner driver, De Vries. So we start P19. Sergeant, Vries, and Jack. That's it then. It's time to go P22. So head down I think he can race. improve on that for sure during the race. A new season, then a clean slate where anything could happen. Anthony Davidson is with me today as once again we get another year of Formula One underway. We're into those tense few minutes before the first race then. Everyone's a little bit nervous about reliability. They haven't been running in the hot, turbulent wake of other cars in practice. They've not been pushing at 100% for long durations. Let's hope no one has to deal with any nasty surprises. So I didn't know what to do for strategy. I wasn't sure if we would do a two-stop or one-stop, but... If we did the two stop, I wanted to start on the mediums and get them out of the way and have the softs for the rest of the race so we could have performance to fight near the end. And of course, they're going to be safety cars on F123. I mean, at this point, I mean, if you don't get a safety car in the first 10 laps of a career mode, I don't know if your game's glitched or what, but uh, you might want to get that checked out. But we do end up going with starting mediums either way because. I, like I said, I want to get mediums out of the way because they're like in between. They're not great in my opinion, but they um, aren't horrible. Right, here we go then. The formation lap gets underway as the drivers prepare themselves for the first race of a brand new Formula One season. Each driver will be hoping to start this season on a high note. So here we are forming up for the first race of the season on the grid, starting P19 behind both the houses. What are we going to be able to do off the start? Are we going to get past everyone? Are we going to bog down and drop to last? We don't know until all these five red lights go out and they're all on. And it's lights out and away we go for the first round of, bar of the 2023 career mode in Bahrain. And we are trying to weave our way through the traffic already up to P. 15. Sending a dive bomb down into turn 1, getting all the way up to P11 at one point, but dropping back down to P13. And we went wide a little bit in turn 2. And so Bottas, Gasly, Alvin all get through, all, but we are still in P14 from P19 on the grid, and we send it up on the inside of Alvin down into turn 4. So we are going to try our hardest to get around. Bottas and Gasly while we are still within touching distance because they are way faster than us and we need to get past them before we get separated. Oh, and we lock up. We almost run into the back of Pierre Gasly, but we get past both of them and we are pushing as hard as we can now all the way down into turn 9 and 10 and trying to close in on Russell before he runs away too because we have the chance, but turns out we won't. But now starting lap 2, we get relatively close to Russell, but not close enough to get a move because we have a little snap of oversteer, or two snaps of oversteer on the exit turn one. Or two, it's about three ball ties, a good run heading down into turn four. But we defend just enough to where he can't, so we will stay in front of him, but he will get around us as we run wide and we do a Lewis Hamilton 2021. But we are still really close behind him and pushing as hard as we can. Oh, and we run wide over the curb. That might give us a little bit of floor damage. And we have contact. Is that going to damage our front wing? I don't think it will. But we do need to watch out for the rest of the race on doing those kind of mistakes. Because we can't afford front wing damage. And we have a little bit snap of over here. In turn 10, trying to overtake out to the We turn on overtake. We have the run. We have the slipstream. We're going to try it round the outside on to the... Uh, concrete on the outside of the track. We get around him. Oh, he's hit us. We get four damage, or er, yeah, underbody damage. Oh, we cut across the track and he hits us again. But no safety car. 
Okay, we think or the even young flags. Some slight damage, but nothing too serious at the moment. Just be careful. So yeah, no issues that's Mark confirming we do have underbody damage, but okay, now on what point we are going to send it from it quite a bit, uh, quite a decent bit far back, and we do get past him through turn two, okay, DRS will be this and we do get the DRS because we are behind him, and we are going to stay ahead of him heading down into turn four. And through turn four, we have a little bit of a walk up on the rear. You can notice it because it didn't step out because it let off the brake quickly enough. But now, after the exit of turn 10, Baltas has DRS. We do not turn our overtake because he isn't close enough for a move yet. And we uh, come through turn 11, and we have a little bit of a moment. Oh, and it's gone. It's gone from us. We didn't hit the wall. We didn't get any damage. So we are going to rejoin. Oh, and Hulkenberg's hit us. He's given us even more underbody damage, okay, and it's a virtual caution, safety virtual car. And we get a five-second penalty. Are you serious? Okay, caution, yes, we did cut across. But it gets upgraded to a full safety car. So we come in. We are going to get a change of tires. We're going to get... We're going to get our penalty served. And so we will be on the freshest set of tires on the whole grid. So we ended up going with medium another set of medium tires because we believe, or I believe, that we will have to pit again because medium right, will not last the whole distance of stop. 25 Pass more laps. Expecting. Yes, there will be a few safety car laps here, but it won't last us all those laps. So we end up catching up to the safety car on lap 6. So two laps later, and Charlotte Leclerc leads from Max Verstappen, Fernando Alonso, Lewis Hamilton, Carlos Sainz, Esteban Ocon, Landon Norris, uh, Lance Stroll, George Russell, Valtteri Bottas, Gasly, Albon, Joe, Sonoda, Magnussen, Sargent, Duin, Piastri, Perez. Perez pitted, I think, under the safety car. DeVries, and then us. So, here we come. On the exit of turn 13, here we go. We are restarting this lap. Okay, let's get ready to go right and we to have the freshest tires. Besides Perez on top, and DeFreeze no leaves the biggest the gap and backs us up. I don't know if that's him doing a favor for Red Bull or what, but we get a great exit out of turn 14 and 15, and we actually have to break so we don't overtake DeFreeze before the line. But we have overtake on. He has a slipstream from DeFreeze or Perez, but we have the slipstream. He asked oh, and we follow Perez all the way up into P15. But Sonoda re-overtakes us, so we drop back to P16, but from P21 to P16 on a restart is absolutely epic. So we are going to push as hard as we can to get past Yuki Sonoda here, down into turn 4. We're going to send it, and it works out for us. So these fresh mediums are 8 laps fresher than Yuki Sonoda's, so that isn't much of a difference, but it will help when it comes to an overtaking situation like this. Now Perez has got past Joe, so now... Juan Yu Zhou is our next target as we head through turn 8, and we have a tiny bit of a moment, not near as bad as some of our other moments, like the one in qualifying. Heading down into turn 9 and 10, I look for a dive, but I don't take it. Um, I do turn on overtake just to see if we can get past at all, if we have even a chance, but I do not think that we will get past- oh, we do! Okay, so we do get through on Juan Yu Zhou and go up to P14. And at this point, my thought was just to follow Perez through. So here, we go. We try to make it three wide on Perez and Albon, but we just let him go. We do have a little bit of contact with Albon's rear diffuser, but we don't get any damage. And we have the uh, overtake on. We have the slip share on Albon. And we send it into turn four again, and we get through. But we do run a little bit wide, so that is going to give him the advantage. But we end up passing Albon and getting up into P13. So now we're going to follow Perez, and Perez gets to run Gasly, so we're going to try it too. Down the main straight, we have overtake on, DRS is not yet enabled, but we have the slipstream of Perez and Gasly, DRS is now enabled. So here we go, we're going to send it down into turn one and get past both Perez and Gasly. We have a little bit of a right front lockup, but we do end up getting through. And through turn two and turn three, we have a decent amount of a gap where they cannot reach us, even if they have DRS, down into turn four. So now we have to go after Bottas in P10. So 
if we get through on bot's house, we get points. Oh, and we have bro we bottomed out over the curb with the low ride height. I think it's set to 32 and 34. So we did bottom out there, but we are still ahead of Gasly and Perez. We lost about seven tenths. Oh, we have a moment of overseer heading down into turn 10 and a little bit of overseer on the exit. But we are still going to be ahead. And going on to lap 11, Perez and Gasly will have overtake. Oh, and DRS, but we have a little moment, so we turn on overtake to try and help us defend from Perez and Gasly with DRS. They are going to try and send it. As now on to lap 11, we're going to be in the middle of a three wide sandwich. And we do, and oh, and Perez has hit us. He's lost his front wing. I thought we had a puncture for a second because my right rear started to feel like it had lost grip. And Perez, and Gasly, oh! We tried to block on Gasly, but he didn't back out, and now it's a VSC is out. And Gasly has lost his front wing. We don't have any more damage. But he did make contact with us, so. There's damage to the underbody. Expect to feel significant effects in terms of performance. No tire concerns at the moment. Just so we didn't get any damage. No punctures, no front wing damage, anything like that. But I tried to defend from Gasly, but he just kept going and didn't back out as we lock up under safe under VSC and we actually throw it in neutral in turn eight. And the VSC is now ending. Okay, so we will ending. see. We will get uh, Gasly and Perez because they both lost their front wing. So we go up to P14 okay, and we send it on Pierre Gasly down into turn 14 immediately right after the restart. But there P Perez peels off into the pit lane and we start lap 12 of the Bahrain Grand Prix. We are now in P14, trying to chase down Alex Albon and Guan Yuzhou into turn one. We do send it. We have a little bit of contact, but it was the wheel, so no front wing damage up into P13 for us. We have a little bit of oversteer on the exit of turn one, okay, entering turn P13. two. So now we are just gonna try and turn some fast laps to stay in front of Albon, Piastri, and all of them, and try and catch up. Oh, and we spun it around. So, we just have dropped back down to P19. As you can see, Perez and Gasly have both gone to hard, so they're going to try and go through to the end of the race. And now, and Alex Albon has pulled over. He I've is out of the session. Okay, they're out of this race. So, it turns out the Mercedes power units also failed just as easy as the Ferrari. So, I think we went with a good choice for our um, right now power unit. Now, in on to lap 13, and Stroll is also pitted. And so he is right behind us. We are going to defend with all our might and make sure not to cut him off again and get into a crash. As we go through turn 10, we get on the throttle late. Stroll has DRS. We're going to activate overtake just to try and help us defend. But it doesn't turn on, so I don't know why it... I don't know why it didn't turn on. Oh, and Stroll doesn't... He, we tried to close the door. But he didn't care. Oh, and we've hit the wall and lost our front wing. So we're gonna, okay, and that brings out the full course, safety the car, out. not just the VSC, a full safety car. So now I don't know what we're gonna do with strategy because we've used two sets of mediums and the MFD is glitched. So I think I'm gonna choose to go onto hards here because if I use mediums again, I'll still have to make another pit stop because you have to use more than one comp or more than. We have to use two compounds at least. So if we went on to mediums again, we'd still have to make another pit stop. And Jack actually came into the pits too, so Prue's a little bit behind. But we are going to get our front wing changed onto a new one. We add, added two clicks of downforce. Okay, off we go. And now the race. Okay, that was we're a going back out on the well track the on lap expected. 14 on a new set of parts. So, we do catch up to the safety car eventually on lap 16, and now it's Verstappen from Leclerc, from Alonso, from Hamilton, to Alcon, then Sainz, Norris, Russell, Bo Valtteri Bottas, Joe Guan Yu, uh, Piastri, Sonoda, Perez, Magnussen, Sargent, Gasly, DeFries, Dewin, Stroll, and then us in P20. And the safety car is coming in at the end of lap 17 on 18. And Stroll again. So the AI are leaving a significant amount of space to the next car if you are in the second to last spot. But here we go. We're going to go back green. We don't have as good as an exit as the last safety car restart. But we do have a decent one on the lap 18. We have the tow from Lance Stroll coming down into turn one. We are going to send it. Oh, and Stroll pulls out under braking. We lock. That is 
way too dangerous. In real life, that would have been a penalty right on the spot. But we are now caught back up to Perez, to Perez in P14. So we are going to turn on overtake and try to send it down into turn four. Here we go. Are we going to get him? No, we're not. Uh, but we can. We still have a chance at overtaking him as we come. Now we're down in turn ten. Oh, we have a little bit of oversteer, but we correct. We collect it and keep it going forward. But now, heading down and towards a, turn eleven, Magnuson tries to catch up to us, but he can't. So we're gonna push as hard as we can now with the tow from Perez to try and stay ahead of Kevin Magnuson in the Haas. We are both on hards, so we should be equal on tires somewhat as we send it from far way back. We lock up, but we do not make any contact. So we are okay there. Overtake on, just to try and gain some extra power and catch up to Perez. DRS is not yet enabled, as this is the second lap after the safety car restart. So we are still pushing as hard as we can to catch up to Oscar Piastri and Sergio Perez, and they have a Perez does have a good exit. So we turn on overtake try to overtake it but we couldn't before turn uh six so we backed out oh and we bottomed out on the curb again as we lock up heading down into turn eight we are still okay oh and we had a big amount of oversteer we are still ahead of kevin magnuson on lap 19 of this grand prix but we are still in a decent position because not a lot of the top uh few runners have pitted so i think after the pit stop cycles we will be up into uh, the points, but we'll have to make sure that nothing happens like a safety car that gives them a free pit stop or we spin or we have a crash or anything like that to make sure we keep that net race points finish. But a net race finish is not what actually happens, so we will have to see what happens on lap 29 of this Grand Prix is Magnuson tries to overtake us, we go to block, oh and he's turned into us, we hit the wall but no damage, no front wing damage, no punctures as we hit Logan Sargent, but there's no damage done to our car so we're going to try and keep pushing and try to get back up to where we were as we start lap 20 and DRS is now enabled. So we are hunting down Logan Sargent, our fellow American, and we're going to send a dive bomb down into turn one and we're going to get through, but we're going to have a massive oversteer moment. That is the worst one of the Grand Prix and we've gone over the curb, so I wouldn't be surprised if we have more underbody damage. But as we go, now Jack Dewan is on us. We're going to try and defend from him, and he turns us into a wall! That looked bad. Are you alright? Let me know you're okay. What just happened? Our own teammate just took us out in the first race of the season. In the first race of his career. And he Smiling keeps going. On the pit wall then after that superb win here I am shell right so, A brilliant effort from the whole team. Well, Anthony Davidson, a resounding victory today, but what set them apart from the rest? I think a large part of the result comes down to temperament. They were able to keep their heads when everyone around them was losing theirs, and that's allowed them to get the best out of the car, to maximize the strategy, and to stay out of trouble. The drivers are en route to the podium as we speak. What a fantastic win for the Red Bull team. They performed exceptionally today, keeping us firmly on the edge of our seats throughout the entirety of the race. Congratulations to everybody at the team. Honestly, not a surprise okay, that Verstappen won again, but Leclerc on the podium in P2. The so Verstappen so, also with the Davidson. fastest lap Who of the race. You the of the so Jack ended up finishing the race in P19 today. as he got they a five-second time penalty, which, in my opinion, that was way more worth than a five-second penalty, maybe even a drive-through, because that was a big impact. If that was real life, I could have been severely injured, or whoever would have been in that car. But for Ferrari lead the Constructors' up, Championship sure by well, two points over Red Bull. One. So, um, 
we end up gaining 2% acclaim for us and 14% for the team. But I wouldn't be surprised if Jack loses his seat after that.